before we begin, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Our great God, we are so thankful for your word. We're thankful that you love us so much and you care for us. We're grateful that we have recorded for us the life of Paul and his writings, and you preserve those until now. We thank you for the, the joy that we can have being in Christ, belonging to you, and we pray that you'll help us to always remember how blessed we are and how fortunate we are that you love us and that you care for us every single day. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. All right, so Rejoice in the Lord is the message of the book of Philippians. And I want to take us back to chapter 1 and finish up a couple of thoughts that we had going at the, as we ended. Uh, in this last section, verses 27 through 30, we'll read that real quick. It says, Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel, and not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which to them is a proof of perdition, but to you of salvation, and that from God. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you saw in me and now here in me. We looked at that third section there, striving together. We looked at the tug of war. We looked at Red Rover, Red Rover, how important it is in tug of war that you're all striving together. And if one person on the side turns around and starts striving against everybody else on the team, it's going to be disastrous. But I want to look at these other ideas that, Kerry, that, that he talks about here as far as uh, how we are to behave one, uh, with, with one another. It says, let your conduct be worthy of the gospel. That was our theme in Ephesians. This concept here of this word, it carries with it the idea of acting like a citizen. So what would you expect someone who is a citizen of our country, how would you expect that person to act? Ideally. Ideally. Obey the laws. Oh. Obey the laws. All right, what else? Pay taxes. Pay taxes. Yeah. Vote. Vote. Have respect for the country. And what, right. what it stands for. Uh, respect the country. Take pride. Okay. Uh, and so let's just use that to try to transition into uh, what it would have been like for the uh, residents of the citizens of Philippi. They were Roman citizens. Philippi was a Roman colony. So they would have taken extreme satisfaction and pride in being a Roman citizen. So what advantages were there of being a Roman citizen? Right. You have certain protections. You couldn't be crucified. Is that what somebody said? Okay. You couldn't be crucified. That's a pretty good protection, right? What else? I can't wait till Sunday those masks come off so I can hear everybody when you make comments. What else? Uh, they uh, couldn't be just arrested. They had to be tried before they were arrested. Yeah, you couldn't just be arrested. You couldn't be beaten before you, know, before you had some kind of a trial to find out if you're guilty. There were a lot of protections of being a Roman citizen. So here Paul is playing on their pride and being a Roman citizen. And he says, you live worthy or you conduct yourselves as a citizen of the gospel. Now, what might that look like? Different than a Roman, for sure. It's going to look like a lot of things, right? I and mean, he's going to talk a little bit about that as, we, as, as he goes forward. But he's really put, putting an emphasis on you live your life as if you are not just a citizen of Rome or a citizen of any earthly place, but you live your life as if you are a citizen of the gospel. Now, we know later on he's going to talk a little bit more about being a citizen. What's he going to say later on in the book about being a citizen and where are we a citizen? Yeah, in chapter 3 and verse 20, he's going to say, For our citizenship is in heaven. Okay? Uh, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, in this section, let your conduct be worthy or live like a citizen of the gospel. That's how you're supposed to live. Because we talked about earlier the, the discernment idea, Right? So this is one of those things as a Christian that you really can't ask yourself. If something isn't specifically noted or talked about, you could always say, all right, is this consistent with being a citizen of the gospel? 
is this action consistent with being a citizen of heaven? And it sort of helps your mindset. Just sort of like how we treat one another. One of the, the great questions to always ask ourselves as we're, as we're dealing with other people is, the goal, what would, how would the golden rule be, right? You know, how would, I, how would I treat, how would I want somebody to treat me in this particular situation? So it's one of those safeguards that God puts there and gives to us. Here's how you have to live. You live like a citizen of the gospel. So if, if, if it's not detailed out, you'll know by your ability to discern how that, how you should live according to how that, that goes. And then he says, your conduct is consistent. Whether I come to you or I'm absent, I will hear that you stand fast in one spirit. So Paul wants, Paul wants them to act like a citizen of the gospel, whether he is there or whether he is not there. Now, we, I think Brian noted earlier about uh, working. We're, we're to work as if the boss is always there, right? Not just, oh, why are you working? Oh, because I didn't know you were, I didn't, why aren't you working? Because I didn't know you were coming. So it's not, it's not that attitude. So there's these, this concept here that we are to be consistent in our conduct whether Paul was absent or whether he was present. He needed to have confidence that they would live that way. And that's how we need to be able to have confidence in one another, too. That when we're out in the world, we're living consistently as a citizen of the gospel, whether anybody else around is watching or not. We're doing what God wants us to do. Will? Jack Thomas had something to say. Jack Thomas had something to say. Oh, okay. You're just raising your hand letting me know Jack raised his hand. No? No? Jack says no. All right, no worries. Uh, and then we have the idea of striving together, which I think we hit pretty well last time. Uh, and then our conduct is not afraid. Right? If you, if, you, if you don't live afraid. And then the last thing he mentions here is our conduct that needs to hold up under strife, under, under temptation, under bad times. So that's what he, he stresses in this particular section. Any comments uh, on finishing out chapter 1? Before we move into chapter 2. Dave? Oh, I just thought it said a lot about Paul that it took so long for him to start talking about himself in chapter 1. You know, he talks about his concern and his love for the Philippians. He talks about the, how his imprisonment had affected the gospel. And it's not told, you know, near the end of the chapter even, that he even brings up his own concern. And he, he even downplays that in chapter later on when he talks about even the monetary gift that you give me. It's really not for me. I, I, it's because it goes to your account. I, I've learned whatever I am. So Paul was not someone who had to be me, me, me all the time. What else? All right, let's read chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Yes, sir. Okay. No worries. Veronica, Will, he's not upset with anybody. He was fiddling with his stuff to get it in. We're all okay. <laughs> all right. We're all good. All right. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 11.